Today's episode is brought to you by NordVPN. Head on over to nordvpn.com slash rogue. Use promo code rogue at checkout. Get 70% off. That's $3.49. Plus, you get an extra month free. Keep your private stuff private. NordVPN. Every so often, man, you get to feel like a genie. We're granting wishes. What? How many years have people been saying, pipe smoking, pipe smoking? I thought you were going to say there was a magic pipe, and I'm like, <laughs> we're going to take it to glory. Smoke our way to riches. You're thinking of the wrong type of pipes, my friend. You'll oh. see God. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we are here with Kale Bean at Pipe World. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, yeah man, this has been on the list for freaking ever. I gotta tell you, uh, cigar smoke, I at least had tried a cigar at some point. I've never even tried a single puff of tobacco from a pipe ever, but I've always loved the smell. It always makes me think of all my favorite old people when I was young. <laughs> Does pipe smoking have a reputation as, as being something that is fringy or wh wh where's the popularity right now? Popularity is gonna be mostly in older, uh, 50 plus, but it's also in more the intellectual community. So a lot of influential writers and thinkers have been pipe smokers throughout the years. And so you'll see, especially in college communities, you'll see somebody getting into J.R.R. Tolkien and going, oh, Tolkien smoked a pipe, therefore I must smoke a pipe. What if you're going for the whole hipster look? I don't know what and you're you talking know. about. <laughs> it's not like I got this trim and then decided to keep it specifically for this episode. And then pick different glasses. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh. I just just had these other glasses. <laughs> then you get a pipe that yeah, screams, yeah, can, I, can I just say, I'm sorry, you were saying, <laughs> why are there so many different shapes to pipes? Good question. Part of that is all the different types of tobacco that you are given to choose from. So you have what most people are familiar with, which is aromatic, um, which, as you were saying earlier, reminds you of all your old people. It's called Sherlock Holmes. It's Sherlock. called Sherlock Holmes. <laughs> Absolutely not. It's actually. laced with opium. <laughs> the game is afoot. <laughs> is it? Is it laced with opium? No, no opium right. today. I mean, good. Um, we don't want that and here. And nothing anywhere close to what Sherlock Holmes would have smoked. What would he have smoked? His, I mean, his opium. enemies. His enemies, the tears oh, wow. and ashes of them. He would have smoked something that would have been more like that. So are these fundamentally different types? Oh my gosh, yes they are. What type is that? This is gonna be an English, and that's gonna be your smoky character. The first one that we smelled was an aromatic. It is a bit weird to say a smoky character to something that oh. you're going to set fire to yeah, and aren't produce they all actual smoky? smoke. <laughs> yep. uh, they, what's the third type? And then the third one is the last category of broad tobaccos. These which is, are, this is beef jerky. They're little <laughs> beef jerky chips. Do not eat it. This Do a, not oh, eat oh, it. Oh man, why did you no, say that? Now I have to eat it. Oh, Come on. Oh. Well, you can do that, I yeah, guess. Yeah, okay. <laughs> uh, does a gentleman dip? Oh yeah, and those are all <laughs> distinctly different, but I never would have thought that you would have needed different types of pipes for the different types of tobacco. Yeah, walk me through that. So yeah, when you're talking on- Also, is there a trash can? Why is there? That was a no-no. <laughs> mm. What typifies an aromatic is it's going to have a sweeter room note to it. It's going to smell aromatic for everybody else around you. So it's a, it's a bit like personal incense. Correct. Can I can I confess something? <laughs> I always love it when there's one person and only one person at a party smoking cloves because it's like to me, <laughs> it's, it's that burning leaves. Yep. And most of the time, if you have somebody in your past who smoked a pipe that aromatic is probably what they smoked because they smoked inside. Mm -hmm. And so it kept everybody else around them happy. Unless you were my grandfather and he just didn't give a <laughs> <laughs> So So he was, he he was more of the boot leather? <laughs> the boot leather, yep. <laughs> that's, that's actually my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> so how do each of these correspond to different types of pipes? So when you're talking different types of pipes, there's a thousand different variations that you can run across. Um, and usually the shape determines what type of tobacco you smoke out of the pipe. I was at a party and I saw somebody doing one of these, these giant Gandalf long stem things, and all, yep. just all I thought was pretension, pretension, pretension. But then he explained, no, 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 the long stem allows the smoke to cool by the time it gets to you. Oh. And then I was like, I bet there's a reason for the shapes of pipes. 
So yes. what are they? <laughs> <laughs> yes, there is. So aromatic is generally universal. There's a specific shape of a pipe called a billiard, uh, which is either straight like that or can be a bent. This is a bent more of a brandy shape than a billiard. What a billiard is is a straight wall. Um, and the chamber is about half as wide as it is tall. After that, you go to the opposite end of the spectrum on flavor, and that's when you start talking about your Englishes. Your Englishes, you typically want the chamber to be almost as wide as the depth of the pipe. You want a fairly wide and narrow chamber. It doesn't change the way that the, the heat of the smoke, but it allows more of the flavor of the tobacco to come through in the smoke. That's amazing because I, I guess I would have assumed this thing's already bubbling over with flavor, so I wouldn't imagine that you want to enhance the amount of flavor. I would imagine it's too much in some You just point. want to get the most of it though, right? That specific smoky character you get up front in the nose of the tobacco, if you just smoke that and you smoke it really hard, that's always going to come through. But depending on the blend, there's other things going on as well. So if you smoke it the way it's intended, usually you'll taste some of the other tobaccos that are blended in there with it. And what type of pipe is that? So that is a Prince. Prince. Oh. Uh, Prince English. Uh, English people have princes. I can remember that. There you yes. go. Got it. Where the term English comes from or originates from is England has ha always had very strict regulations on what you can do with your tobacco and what you can't. By adding some sort of cordial to your tobacco in England, it is no longer classified as tobacco. And, and a cordial is just, uh, in this case, the aromatics, the stuff that makes it pleasant for other people. Yes. They perceive it as you're corrupting it, and so it's no longer English tobacco. It's no longer tobacco. The English basically took straight tobacco and played with all of the different blends and curing processes. And at one point, they came across a a fluke. It was an accident. There was a surplus of crop in Syria, and so all of the farmers started housing their tobacco in their houses. They're cooking their food in their house while the tobacco's curing, and the tobacco ended up getting smoke cured, basically. Oh, wow. Whether it's true or not, it was camel dung originally. Oh, dear. I, oh, I, dear. I, I detected some notes <laughs> of that, which is not a bad thing. Camels have but, very fragrant, alluring scents. So. Absolutely. So that's at least the urban myth, is that it was originally cow dung. Typically, it's done over wood, and it's now because we don't get things out of Syria anymore, out of Cyprus. So it's typically Cyprian Latakia. Aromatics, you want the uh, the bell end? What was it called? Billiard. Billiard. <laughs> Aromatics, billiard, English, and prints. There it is. Yeah. All right, so let's talk about the, you bell said the Virginia? <laughs> Thank you, I'm glad you finally got that. <laughs> it took me a second, I was like. <laughs> oh yeah, do you have a bell end pipe for him? <laughs> so then when you talk Virginias, you want a very narrow chamber and a very deep bowl. Oh, this is what I think of as, uh, what was it, a Douglas MacArthur, like a corn cob pipe corn or cob something. Corn cob pipe, and if you need a corn cob pipe, we can always Is that actually made from an actual corn cob? A corn cob pipe. <sighs> Look at that. That's an actual corn cob. Yeah, that you can tell it's been actual... used too. Yeah. What makes Virginia, uh, Virginian? Virginia? Virginia. Virginia special. It's a specific strain of tobacco, but it's usually, when you're referring to Virginias, it's a blend. So it can be a blend of Virginia tobacco, Virginia and Burley, Virginia and Perique, or a bunch of different things. But Virginia specifically has the most naturally occurring sugar in it. No sugar has been added to it, but because there's sugar in the tobacco, it wants to burn really hot. Virginia tobacco typically is more like your light roast coffees. You've got to brew it right to get the flavor to come out and to be able to get all of the little nuanced notes of that blend. So for whatever reason, a tall, narrow chamber allows you to keep the ember going, but it's a much smaller ember, so you're not overheating the rest of the tobacco. You're not burning off some of the oils that are in the tobacco, and you get more flavor coming through because of that. And one more time, the, the type of this was? That's going to be called a poker. A poker. All right, so Virginia, got a bunch of people playing poker, aromatic, you know, billiards, mm -hmm. you got the uh, English, you got the, the, the print, Prince? English Prince. Yes. Prince, got it, okay. So it. Uh, I'm gonna guess that there's a little bit more to learn <laughs> about pipe smoke than uh, what we just got. <laughs> as is often the case, I was surprised with the amount of science that was going mm -hmm. into this episode. I'm usually just adjacent to it myself, as <laughs> is Brian. <laughs> All right, so at this point, I feel like we could walk in and buy a pipe and not insult ourselves by 
buying the wrong tobacco to go with it, but I'm gonna guess that there's no end to the specifics of the ritual. What, what are the broadest of strokes? Because I know a cigar, as long as you light it, get it going, take a puff every few seconds, it's gonna stay alive. Is that not the case? Not with a pipe. Broad strokes that you'll need to master, or at least get a good feel for, are gonna be- Is it taking the pipe out and putting your hand in your yes, chin? Yes, and, and pontificating appropriately. I knew it. Uh, so you need to know, basically with a cigar, somebody's done all the work of preparing the tobacco in a way to get it to smoke correctly for you. Mm -hmm. You get to be that person. So you need to learn how to load your pipe appropriately. Oh, yeah. You want to make a guess? We'll see how wrong. Because what I would do is I would I would just put everything in. And then light it on fire. Just poke it a little bit and then light it. And I don't, that's know, it. I don't know what else that's to all. do. That's yeah. all, yeah. Dump it, poke it, light it. <laughs> and that's what most people assume. And it's more akin to building a fire. You want enough airflow going through it that everything burns well, but you want it tight enough that it's going to stay burning and not just go out after a couple of Do we need pups. like a striking rod or? <laughs> well, if I'm following your lead, I'm guessing in a campfire, what you want is you want kind of a little oven with tinder in the middle, but you also want to kind of seal, not really totally seal it, but, but essentially keep the heat in so that the fire keeps going. So would that mean that somehow you want it loose at the base, but more tightly packed on top? Correct. And. You are absolutely right. So you do loosen nice. the pack at the bottom and you progressively tighten it up as you go up. It's elementary, my dear oh, Jason. Really? <laughs> <laughs> I just I just solved the crime. Uh, once on television I started a fire with my own urine. <laughs> you were there. Quite, quite right, quite right. <laughs> Broad strokes on how you actually smoke from a pipe. Well, before we get there, you want to actually know what your pipe is made out of before we launch into how to smoke it. It's a good point. The, what if your pipe is made of more tobacco? You ever think of that? Oh, <laughs> Press like wood chipper tobacco. Do you have any made of bone? <laughs> Particle board? No. No bone pipes, but you will see sometimes where they use a decorative piece of bone in the stem material. Do you need bones? There is a guy named We'll talk bones. about it. <laughs> Take it offline. We'll go there somewhere. Okay. The most common material that is used for pipes now is briar. It's the, it comes out of the root ball of a heath shrub. Man, that was a lot of words. I think yeah. some of them were English. Yeah. It's, it's, it's hearthstone, briar, uh, briar? Uh, 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 prawn shrimp, what? I don't, say, say all that again. Briar comes from the root ball. So instead of a branch of a tree, it's actually what's dug out of the ground. So right. it's the root system out of a heath shrub. So it's a shrub, which is, Go back to that shrubbery. Mm -hmm. Shrubbery. Or looking for a shrubbery. Mm -hmm. Starting out looking for a pipe, you want to make sure that it's at least made out of briar. Other materials that are good for pipe making, um, corn cob. That's been a universal for at least in the Americas. Why for a are long these time. particularly better? Do they do they not burn or? They're inexpensive, so it's a good launching point because it's. You know, instead of spending, you know, 50 plus, you're spending 15 bucks. Okay. It's a disposable pipe, so it will burn out eventually. So if you're out, you know, throwing axes or chopping down a tree, then it's a good pipe to have with you in case it gets hit by the axe. That's interesting. It just now occurs to me that if you spend a lot of money on a pipe, weirdly, you're gonna want to use it sparingly and pay an awful lot of attention to it while you're smoking it, unlike if you're distracted working in the shop and just wanna be able to set one down. Yes. And then even older than briar or even cob would be meerschaum. Meerschaum is, they think it's a crustacean. dogs. <laughs> you son of a <laughs> I knew it! <laughs> they believe it's a fossilized crustacean. It's a similar material to soapstone. And the interesting thing is it only comes out of Turkey, at least in the pure white form. And Meerschaum is a German word that means sea foam. It the, looks like a ceramic almost. It's it's a stone material. But you wouldn't want actual ceramics? Or are those bad for some reason? Ceramics tend to burn very hot and don't breathe particularly well. Oh, they'll probably well. get hot in your hand. And, Correct. Yeah, that'd be really uncomfortable. That gets us to an old, old form of smoking, which is clay. Clay oh, wow. works. Two downsides to clay is one, that the bowl gets insanely hot, so mm. you can't actually hold it like this. It's gonna be 
in the hand out here. You're gonna hold it by the stem rather than by the bowl. The other is you drop it, it's gonna go into a thousand pieces. Mm. But in England specifically, you see it everywhere. Why? Because clay's everywhere in England, so it's very easy to manufacture, especially prior to a lot of trade happening and being able to export and import briar. Okay, so let's say we got a proper briar and we're matching it with the right tobacco. I guess do, do we, we should just do this, right? I think so. Yeah, let's learn by right. doing. Okay, which which tobacco do you want? Uh, I would like uh, the uh, English, so I will need a Prince okay. pipe. Ah, I am a courteous pipe smoker, so I would like an aromatic. And if you don't mind pairing me with a billiard pipe, I think that would do quite nicely. I'll quite give well. you an apple. Yeah, yes, quite right. All right, so now what? <laughs> so from there, I will demonstrate how to do it, and then you guys will copy. You're trying to build a fire, so you want a couple of things happening. You want enough airflow through it that everything's gonna burn, but you don't want so much that you're right. get mm -hmm. air going. So how you create that, now everybody has their own opinion. What's the best way to load a pipe? When you're first starting out, you wanna minimize your variables. So you always start with the same loading method, which is called the three pack method. You grab a pinch of tobacco and you gently do what's called a gravity fill. A gravity fill? Just like dropping it in you're basically? You're dropping it in. Yep. Okay, and you want it nice and loose, right? Yep. How much do we want? All the way up or? Yeah, you're gonna fill it until the whole chamber is full. Mm -hmm. So you want more than that. Yeah. I guess uh, you're, you're probably gonna have spillage all the time doing this, huh? Absolutely. Yeah, I, was, I was making a mess. Okay. So you, just, you want to get just to the lip, right? Correct. Okay. And then you are going to do a baby push or a very gentle push. So you basically push it down to about halfway. With your pinky or I guess you could use you an use, instrument. You can use the instrument. There's two different schools of thought. One is that the if you use the tamper, it'll give you a more even pack. I personally like to use my finger because I like the feedback that I get. I know how much pressure I'm putting on mm -hmm. it because um, it is a learned thing. You could probably pack down a little bit. It felt like I was pushing too hard. Oh yeah? Though, so. Yeah, and you don't want to push Like it was too already hard. getting packed? Yeah, and I guess also you have a different bowl shape. Oh, that's true. Do, which yeah. will affect it. Yep. And then we're going to do the same thing again where you do that gravity fill. So at this point, I'm picturing we kind of have like a medium packing on the bottom part. I would say a light packing on the bottom. Okay. And we're going to go medium in the middle. So heavier on the middle. So the second time I'm going to give it a little bit of extra oomph. And that's not just squishing down the stuff that's, on the bottom? It will a little bit. And that's part of the reason why we packed it loosely on the bottom is so that as we put pressure on it, the whole pack evens out consistently. Okay. And I think I got it. Does that look right? So I'm about two thirds up. Yeah. I'm, I'm already pretty. Oh, wow. More. Okay. And then the last one and hence the name three pack method. And then the last one you'll do nice and firm. Okay, so, but again, a gravity fill first? Gravity fill. Okay, got it. Oof. And that's not bad if it's overflowing oh, okay. a little bit. All right. The last thing I do is push everything down just below the rim. And get that nice and hard though. And you're gonna do go nice and firm. So a good way okay. to think about it is that first pack is a baby push, mm -hmm. the second pack is a ladies push. And the third is a man's. <laughs> Hello, 19th century. Uh, <laughs> He's not wrong. <laughs> uh, all right, now what? So from there, the last thing you do before we even talk about fire is... Oh, you got to test if you've clogged oh. it. Now, now we're, not, we're not inhaling, we're puffing? Puffing, much like a cigar. Mm, quite right. Very, verily. <laughs> so you want it loose, but you don't want it too loose. And it's this fine balancing. Personally, my opinion, if you're loading the pipe and things are too loose, it's fine to leave it there. Mm -hmm. If it's too tight, it's much better to dump it out and start over. Mm. Too tight, you can't do a whole lot for. Too loose, you can always tighten it back up. Got it. So if it is too tight, do you find yourself just scrape it all out and go again? Yep. Wow. And right. usually, you dump it back into the can yeah. that you're working for. You're not wasting that. You're not, it's not wasted because we haven't put flame to it yet. And right. that's why you do that test draw is so that you don't waste the tobacco. 
Okay, so if uh, I'm not getting much resistance at all yeah, when, when I'm puffing on there, does that mean we should tighten it up a bit? Or? It's not a bad idea. Again, too loose is okay. Okay. Um, but. Yeah, that's that feels better. Yeah. And yeah. you'll get there. And this is where experience comes in. You'll learn as you smoke your pipe, okay, that was too loose and things burn too fast. And so I will tighten it up the next time. Okay, and now this is one of those things. I know in the cigar world, people got strong opinions about what kind of fuel you use oh, yeah. to light your, your tobacco. I brought some magnesium strips usually used for thermite. <laughs> and that's typically a very, very bad idea. Oh. Okay, so, well agree to disagree, but continue. The only really hard and fast rule with pipe smoking is do not, that wonderful torch you bought to smoke your cigars with, do not use that with your pipe. Huh. And the reason for that is not so much about the tobacco, it is about you just spent $100 on your pipe. Now you're taking something that burns at about 1,000 degrees, oh, yeah. and you're sticking, trying to take something burning really hot, flip it upside down, and at the same time stick it into your pipe. That can and will burn out the pipe. Got it. You don't want to do that. I guess a match is, is I mean, that's what I see the most, right? Ideally, you want to use matches, and you want to actually, when you're first lighting, you want to take out three matches. The other thing you can use is a pipe lighter. The big thing a pipe lighter will always have in common is that it's a soft flame. Okay. And that it's at an angle. If you notice, that flame is not pointing directly up. If you look at my pipe, my pipe is not pointing out like a cigar, so you need something that you can turn upside down and direct into. Got it. It's not going to burn your thumb. Yeah, and it's not making that aggressive sound and pushing Correct. it directly out. Okay. Yep. yep. Is the three matches just so you don't look like a chump when the first one doesn't work? <laughs> is, is that so you don't have to keep on pulling them out one at a time? So we're, we're doing the building a fire thing again. We're back to that analogy. Mm -hmm. You need to get the whole fire burning just because you have smoke doesn't mean the pipe is going. One of the biggest things I see guys come back to me and say, why isn't my pipe working? Well, it's because you haven't lit it correctly. <laughs> you took a match and thought it was a cigarette, and so you went puff, 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 now I have smoke, puff, puff, oh, now it's out, what the hell? Okay, light another match, puff, puff, I have smoke, oh crap, it's out again. The that's three, gonna happen. <laughs> that, it will happen, and that's normal when you're first starting out, but technique, makes a world of difference. Huh. I just realized the lighter, you can hold the pipe and use just one-handed. You can't do that with the matches. So I guess you have to what, bite down or? Yeah, you usually typically, you hold the pipe in your teeth and everybody's different because their mouths are different. And that's part of also some of the variation you'll see in pipes is different stem configurations because it'll be more comfortable for one person and less comfortable for another. Mm. Matches are great when you're inside. They suck when you're on the back porch trying to light it and the wind is going and so it makes it harder. But matches also burn at about the same temperature as your pipe tobacco. So that's a good, good thing. So I will walk through, then I will demonstrate. All right. And then you will do. You got it. So you take your first two matches and you're gonna do what's called the char light. As you draw on the pipe, you're gonna run the matches back and forth over the surface of the pipe. What you're doing is burning off that top layer of moisture and trying to create an ash layer that'll help aerate the tobacco so you get a nice even airflow all the way through. Then you'll grab your tamper, which is basically anything that has a flat surface on it that's not gonna combust. So you'll grab your tamper and then you'll flatten everything out so you have that nice even flat surface. Usually in that process of flattening everything out, you've put the whole pipe out and now you've gotta do your third match. But you have the touch warmed up. everything up so that that single match is gonna make everything it's start. It's gonna again. make everything start and then that'll keep it going. So you start with the two matches. <clears throat> Burn off the sulfur. So like a puff and a pass? Mm-hmm. And the key here is long, slow draws. The other nice thing about matches is it gives you a time frame. If you haven't burned through at least half your match, you haven't charred it correctly. Ah. Okay. And so now, now you're tamping now down. Now we grab the tamper. And I'm not really putting any pressure on there. I'm just flattening out the top layer that has burned. 
and I'm also drawing to give myself the feedback of what is my tamper doing. So at this point, if everything was a little bit on the looser side than what I like, I would also tighten it up to where I want. So I would, again, draw and tamp at the same time so I get that feedback of what's happening in the pipe. So at this point, the top layer is kind of cooled off, but, but down in there are some embers just barely alive. Yeah, and if you notice, yeah, you can see some of the you smoke coming out. You can see a little bit of smoke and you can see that little white spot and that's where it's burning and around the kind of around the edges, that's where it's not burning so well. And so that's what the final match is for is to get that whole ember. You want, much like a cigar, you want that whole end of the cigar to burn all the way down, not just one little side of right. it. Right. That's still a problem with cigars. Yeah. Like I keep getting lopsided oh, cigars. <laughs> Oh, and you do the, the pass on this as well. Mm-hmm. A lot of that is to get that whole surface lit. Yeah, see, I would have thought you jam it in there, you take a few puffs and you're done. <laughs> and that's a great way for it to go out and to have a very bad experience. And usually you get tongue bite out of that because you're relighting and relighting and relighting and it gets tongue bite gets, is where it gets hot on your tongue where it gets hot enough to actually give you a little bit of a burn on your tongue okay one of the weird things for cigar smokers coming into pipe tobacco is in cigars you can get a spicy kind of peppery sensation if you're getting that out of your pipe it's because you're actually burning your tongue huh all right you feel like yeah. we're ready yeah can we do this Ah, yes, sir. Well, yeah, quite right. Yeah. Mm, yes, and think long, slow draws. Ah. Oh. Mine went out. <laughs> and that happens. Thank you, sir. Yeah, at this point, I'm afraid I'm overdoing it. I think I've got a slow burning match or something. Mm-hmm, it's a match. It's totally a match. At this point, I'd say you're you're in good shape. So that's when you grab the tamper. Tamper. I'm gonna flatten all the ash. Try you not to You wanna draw on it while you're tamping. Mm. So you can get, again, get that feedback. Oh yeah, you can definitely see the reduction in the amount of smoke. And so now, we get it going the rest of the way. All right, all right, I'm, I'm picking this up. Man, I just realized we have to learn smoke tricks now, blowing smoke rings and all that stuff. Oh, absolutely. So once everything's lit and everything's going, that's when you slow everything down. One of the weirdest things for people to get used to is the amount of smoke coming off of a pipe. The amount should be more of a wisp rather than a billowing cloud. We're not vaporizing. And it should continue to just wisp up whether I'm puffing on it or not? Yeah, if you're not puffing on it, eventually it will go out. You usually get about a minute before it does. How's it taste? Smoky? They're smoky. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's are, you, are, you, are you regretting your, your decision? No, no, I'm not. Uh, I'm fine. <laughs> it's, 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 it's intense. It's a lot. Here's the part that blows my mind is I know we have just barely scratched the surface of all of the ritual <laughs> and types of pipes and types of tobaccos and stuff, and I'm sure we'll be back again. But what can we promote for your time, sir? Because this is amazing. <laughs> so we're Pipe World. Uh, we're here in Austin, Texas. We also have a location up in Round Rock. Um, not a whole lot of online presence, but we do have a website. For those who aren't in the Austin area, we're, we're, just find your local pipe shop? Find your local pipe shop. If you want to smoke a pipe, best advice I can give you is find that cigar shop, pipe shop that actually does sell pipes and knows what they're talking about. And do it in person and find an expert to help guide you along. Correct. And also, like, hopefully on the way there, there'll be an unsolved crime. 
Yeah. You're, you're gonna be like, this one, three, one. Actually, on the way out, that's where you want the unsolved. Okay. Crime. You guys wait here. <laughs> I'm gonna go commit a crime. <laughs> you gotta figure it out. You know, like, you're like, officer, all I remember is he was smoking a pipe and I said, you've got it backwards. <laughs> the other guys, the good guys. <laughs> Murphy, I get these people all up in my YouTube feed saying, You don't need a VPN. That's the way I talk. It's me, another YouTuber who hates VPNs. Explain one legitimate use for a VPN. There are a lot of old Southern women commenting on your YouTube videos. Oh, bless your heart. I say there's no reason for a VPN. It's not like anyone has anything to hide at any given time from any person. I hate VPNs. It's me, Southern Belle VPN hating lady. Oh, Southern Belle VPN hating lady. That's just a position of ignorance. You don't understand that there are forces out there who want to peek at all of your private internet business. Oh, well, it's if true. you want to peek at a little bit of this apple pie, you can have some of this apple pie. Maybe I'll make you a little bit of lemonade. I don't understand why anybody would want to keep their identity private or where they go on the internet a secret from other people. Also, will you please tell me everywhere you go on the internet? I'd like to discuss it with all my ladies at the Quilton Bee. I'm going to nord you because I think you, Southern Bell Internet Commenter, are a threat to my privacy. Are you talking about your very peculiar list of searches that I've been looking at on your Googles? Are you talking about the fact that I'm your IT person and I see every single website that you go to? Are you talking about the fact that sometimes you're in a public place and that you have to go ahead and attach to an unfamiliar Wi-Fi and you want the safety and security that comes from knowing that all of your stuff has military grade encryption and that nobody knows what you're up to because you're on the internet? I don't want to look at your stuff. I don't want you looking at mine. I'm gonna nord it up. You should too. Oh my goodness, you've convinced me. You strapping young lad. Where should I go to sign up for NordVPN? Go to nordvpn.com forward slash rogue. Use promo code rogue and get 70% off a three year plan. Ooh, that Keep sounds pretty good, but thing. I'm only gonna do it if I also get one month free extra. Well, guess what, what? lady? You're getting it on Nord. How do you feel now? Oh my God, Nord gave it to me and I couldn't be happier. I'm a convert. I love VPNs now. I want to form a new YouTube channel. I think I think I gave her the vapors. I think Nord gave her the vapors. <laughs> that's, uh, that's good. <laughs> My daughter, up until like age six, was still kind of sucking on her thumb, and I was so jealous because she would sit there and watch it thoughtfully, and then when she had a thought, she would pop it out and offer her business <laughs> and go back. And I just, I watched that and I'm like, I need to start smoking a pipe. I thought you were gonna say she needed to start smoking a pipe to I wean her off of her thumb. <laughs>